Okay, thank you, Nora. Okay, well, hi, everybody. I'll introduce myself again um, for the recording. I'm Andy Harwood, co-owner of the Vaz Harwood team. Thank you all for joining us. Um, uh, so um, at the Vaz Harwood team, we're doing a series of classes um, called the Vaz Harwood Academy. And we decided to make some of these into a crash course um, because we realized that um, you know, not everybody wants to commit an hour or two to uh, necessarily learning about something and there's other resources out there for that. So let me just tee this up. This is going to be a crash course. This will not be an exhaustive uh, course in uh, how to do your database. But what I want to do is just give you the um, give you the most important concepts and pieces here so that you can take it and run with it if you don't have a system right now or if you have um, whatever you have uh, you you want to improve it um and we'll we'll go over what we do on our team uh how we manage our database and just keep this a quick um 30 minute overview sound good and feel free to put any questions in chat and also um uh you know we can stick around and chat afterward i'll try to keep this to like 30 minutes or ish uh, Nora is always the timekeeper here, so <laughs> if I get off track, she just reins me back in. <laughs> and then feel free to connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, YouTube at, at Vaz Harwood or Vaz Harwood team. Uh, so without further ado, yes, vazharwood.com slash academy too, if you want to know more about upcoming classes and things like that. Uh, we're in the process of building that out for the new year too. So um, stay in touch with us and, and uh, connect. Um, so for anyone who doesn't realize this, and I really didn't getting into real estate when we were newer, your database is actually your most important business asset. Um, and I think one of the ways that I learned this was from reading The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And the one story completely stuck with me and sticks with me to this day. So Gary Keller talks in this book about how he um, he had an eye doctor and he went to the eye doctor for years. Uh, and one day he um, he scheduled an eye appointment, went into the eye doctor and it was a different eye doctor. Like it was the same place, but the doctor was different. The person at the desk was different and whatever. And so his point is that uh, he was a customer, not even so much of that eye doctor, but uh, of that business. And the doctor sold his business. He sold his database. That was that was the most important um, uh, the most important thing in that business. He actually sold Gary Keller's contact information to, you know, to the next eye doctor who bought the business. So this is very similar in real estate your database is absolutely the most important thing and if you don't have a good database or it's not well set up um, or well marketed to you're leaving tons and tons of money on the table um, and, and it took me a while to understand this and improve our systems and, and get a good handle on it uh, so um, the corollary to this is the size of the database is proportionate um, to how much money you can or will make. Pure and simple, it's math. Um, assuming that it's properly organized and properly marketed too. Uh, so again, the size of the database is proportionate to how much money you can and will make. Uh, it's it's um, it's it's so important. Uh, you know, just like how many people are in there, period, uh, and then what you do with it. Um, and and if this seems obvious to anybody uh, who's on this recording, then you know this, you, you know real estate. Um, but I, I encounter agents all the time who don't understand this. And this is just so fundamental. So it's another reason I wanted to do a class in this. Um, that uh, it's amazing to me how many people in this business just don't just don't understand that basic thing. And if they did, they would be so much more successful. Um, this is something that I, um, 
I don't have a firm answer on if somebody in the chat knows uh, or on here you know, wants to put it in chat knows or has firsthand experience on kind of their conversion rates or how many people in in the database uh, can produce a certain amount of income, feel free to add it. But I think um, I want to just introduce the concept because I think it's highly, highly variable. I think there are a lot of variables and I think um, I don't know that I would necessarily go with just like one sort of thing that you find until you've been in business a few years and you know kind of what your conversions are. Um, you're not going to know for sure for your own database, but it's still true, regardless of what any of the math is, it's still true that the size is going to determine the outcome if it's if everything else is being properly done. But if you take your let's just say that you want to make $100,000 um in gci just you know gross closed income and say your average commission is ten thousand dollars let's just use round numbers let's let's not get into team splits or um you know any other sort of cost of doing business just to keep things simple um you'd uh, you'd need 10 deals to make that gross basically um and then you want to divide your the number of deals you need by the number that actually close. And I'm going to simplify this because there's a lot more steps you can go into here. We we have a a system that we use that's more granular, like in terms of um, you know the number of appointments set to the ones that actually met. And you can take this down to multiple multiple levels, and I'd encourage you to do it. But given again that this is a crash course, I didn't want to go too deep into it. Um, but basically, you know, if you take the actual number of deals to the number that close, that's probably 90, 95%, something like that. And then the number that are, um, you know, actually under contract to the number uh, of appointments uh, that are actually going to convert, uh, you get the number of appointments that you need. Um, so that might be 60%, it might be 50%, all those are a little bit different uh, for you. But um, the question becomes, how many appointments can your database produce or how many leads can your database produce? Um, there are so many variables in this and so many things that can influence it. But if you want to be conservative, I mean, it could be it could be two percent ish, five percent ish. If you have a really, really hopping, extremely well functioning system and you've got good quality leads, right? There's a big difference between, you know, just like a lot of random people, which isn't necessarily bad, but they, they not, may not be as, as more interested in real estate as if they were all like open house leads or something like that. Um, but I would just encourage you, rather than getting into all the granular math or trying to put some exact number on it here, um, just to keep an eye on this as you develop your systems and keep an eye on what your, your own numbers are. They're all, all going to be different for different people, different styles of doing business, different locations, etc. Um, so point made on that. Um, a, po a couple points about data. I love this Lego visual and I wanted to put it in here um, because there's a couple ways to look at this. One could be from the perspective of the people, you know, being the data in your database. And the other could be how you market real estate data to 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 your um, database but um the point here is the, the quick point is that um you've got you know lots of people or lots of pieces of information and you can sort them arrange them whatever and a lot of us kind of get to the point of the charts and graphs and that doesn't usually that doesn't usually move anybody it's not until you get to the point where you're um putting a story around something or you're making something useful um to people that they actually click so keep that in mind as you're thinking about um you know and again it's back to the thing of like are these all open house leads or are they um you know wh where where are your data sources coming from don't lose sight of the fact that you've got to you've got to connect with people um on a story or item of value, useful kind of a level. Um, so um, 
the, the main point number one I want to make here is you need a system that works for you. Um, when we started, uh, we only had a spreadsheet. That was as far as I could. I think we. I think Keller Williams had a system. It wasn't command at the time, but um, that was even that was too daunting for us. We just started with a spreadsheet. Um, now, uh, if you're at Keller Williams, they've got they've got a good system called Command. Um, we use Follow Up Boss ourselves, um, and we and we have to use Command too because of how they do some compliance stuff. Um, but my my main point here is that um, you've got to find a system that works for you for your budget right now. Um, if you don't have one and you're and you're doing real estate and those all the people that you know and all the um, leads that you get aren't going into anything, um, nothing is going to come of that or very little. So. If you're at a brokerage that has a database system, I would en encourage you to plug in and use it go to trainings, find the tech person at the office, uh, plug into that. If you're on a team, um, uh, we've had people on our team that I personally, that I want, I wanted to put them to put more stuff in the database and, um, you know, there's only so much I can do. Like you've, if you've got all the systems, you've got the team, you've got a good brokerage, you've still got to, you still got to engage with the tools that you have and get that information in there. And I would emphasize if you're starting out and you're, and you're, you don't have a lot of um, people right now and you're just getting going, at least take that, take your people and put them on a spreadsheet minimum because you can always take your spreadsheet and upload it into another, um, a better system, right? Would, would you agree, Nora? You... <laughs> oh, you're yes, muted. I would definitely agree. Um, it's better, and we'll cover this when we get a little bit further, but it's better to have yeah. incomplete data than, than to make sure it's perfect. Yep, yep. And remember that everything in everything in business, uh, real estate businesses included, should run on systems. Systems run businesses. People run systems. Um, so you're designing a system and improving it and and um, uh, and moving it forward, evolving it. Um, we uh, so pro Nora, can you talk a little bit about command and pros and cons and why we use uh, why we use follow-up bus? Yeah. Um, so I, how many of you are KW? I mean, can you put in the chat if you're KW or not? I mean, this is not a KW exclusive, um, yeah. thing. So I just yeah. want to kind of get a sense of if people are using command or not, but anyways, command is really great. If you're a solo agent, um, some, the point of having a really good database is you want to be able to find people that fit certain criteria so that you can market to them and follow-up bus allows us to really get really granular on that filtering, who's a veteran, whose birthday's in March, who's all of these things, um, who exclude people who closed, exclude people who are lost, exclude people. So command is great. Personally, I think it does not exclude well. So that's one of the main reasons we're using um, another database um, so that we can target the right people, not the wrong people with um, specific marketing. Also, I'll add that our needs change as you, um, uh, if, if you evolve your business from being a solo agent to a team, then things go up a lot in terms of you got to handle multiple people, multiple agents, maybe people joined your team and left, you know, and so that all of that information has to be stored. So command, and I don't know what other systems are out there at Edina or Coldwell Banker or whatever, I, I really don't know, but um, I suspect they might have something. Uh, and so, um, so if, um, I, I think command would work very well for a solo agent. Um, but I think, uh, as your needs go up, or if you get more sophisticated in your database marketing, you may need to start paying for something like follow up bus or another system. There are a lot of good ones out there. I will say though, we do cross use command for our contacts because they're building it and building it and improving it. So I, I see that right. there could be the, the time where it's amazing. And so we have our admin team um, help take care of that for us. If you're just a solo agent, just pick one and use one, right? Um, that's what's going to be most important. And I, I would, I would 
recommend not, once you get out of that Excel sheet, keep it out of that Excel sheet as long as you can re-download your data afterward. Yeah. So what do we use on the Vaz Harwood team, actually, personally? Um, we use follow-up bus. And I'm not trying to sell anybody on follow-up bus, but I, th I think it's the best or one of the best ones out there for sure. And a lot of tap teams are using it. Um, and it's a significant cost for us, so it's worth it. Um, it's so worth it. Like, there's no way. I would actually say we couldn't live without it, that or something in that echelon. Um, so I would encourage anybody to um, uh, either join a team that has that or um, or look toward getting a really good system yourself. It's I will say, though, all the principles Andy's going to be talk uh, is talking about here, you can do with command. You can do with um, like pretty much Correct. any of these databases out there. You can do with a free version of a database, right? It's all about Correct. how you use it and how you code your own data, and we'll get into that. Yeah, the other advantage for command for Keller Williams agents who are solo is that um, you probably have, um, you know, some good support in the market center too, um, like a tech tech person um, like Drew at our office um, who can help you too, um, and so that's that's pretty valuable. So we we use follow up bus and we use command. Um, and Nora, why do we use the two? Um, well, I mean, follow up boss is our CRM. It's really our relationship management system. Command is for yeah. compliance. Um, and we yeah. also use it um, for that postcard feature that they have. That's really handy. Um, that actually yeah. works very well um, in there. So if you're an agent and you're using command, you haven't used the postcard feature, I recommend it. And we also use a system called CSU, which allows us to um, um, put all the transactions in and manage uh, manage tasks related to transactions and manage um, uh, what what all, what other things, Nora? Um, uh, task reminders, um, documents, um, commissions review, it tracks yeah. goals against your commission. I mean, command can do all this stuff too, right? So it just right what works best for you. So and command can also send. Uh, um, mailers and things like that and it's got some really good features for it um but we and follow-up bus can send emails it can send mass emails and drip campaigns and all that stuff too but we also use mailchimp because um if we need to do more marketing type of emails to our database we have um like everybody is in command that's the or i mean follow-up bus that's the big holding place for everyone that's like the gold standard and then transactions are in command and CSU and um, like opportunities. And then we use MailChimp when we're doing more like marketing type of things that need better design, like our newsletter and stuff like that. So my point to all this is, unfortunately, um, there probably isn't one system that's going to work for you that does absolutely everything. Even if you're um, no matter where you are at in this business, you'll probably need a, a tech stack of some kind. It might be a little one, um, or it might grow over time to be a bigger one. Um, uh, so, okay, part number two, and this is where I see a lot of agents not, um, uh, not getting started right, maybe, or not maximizing what they, they actually have, uh, and not having good habits. Um, it's so important that you can continuously, continuously feed the database. Um, your database is hungry and putting more people into it all the time is the key to success. Um, so Nora, you wrote up this yo mama, yo auntie thing. This is funny, but <laughs> we have this sheet, this, this thing, this, what it is. <laughs> this, this graphic that says, who do I already know that isn't in my database? This, uh, this came from bold Keller Williams bold. And, um, I've got a PDF of it. We can send it out to everybody. Um, it's, it's very good food for thought. It's multiple pages of this, all these questions. If you're newer to the business, especially, and if you are, um, maybe even if you've been in the business a few years, but your database is missing a lot of people, go through this exercise, put some time on your calendar to think about all the people that you know already, 
you you probably know you probably know a thousand people or more or thousands or at least hundreds and you probably just haven't thought about all the people that you know and so i've i've known people with who know tons of people have you know thousands of hundreds and thousands of social media followers and very very small databases all of those people need to go in there all of them just get them just get them in there uh and so you should probably set some goals and make a plan do a little time blocking put something on your calendar to add um x number a day or a week or whatever and check in on your progress get some accountability um but just um just think about uh can can you spend some time entering all the people that you know um or you could even put them on a spreadsheet too if you're tech challenged or busy or whatever you can take you can export people from um from uh, you know Facebook and that sort of thing, and you could um, make sure that you at least have a name, phone, and email, and you can mass upload them into your into your database, um, or have somebody, the tech person at the office, help you. Um, a lot of lenders have like a marketing person who will help you with that kind of thing too, uh, for free. But nothing is going to happen if you don't have a goal and and um, a little system and you're taking this seriously about seeing that thing grow um and it's cool it's like watching a plant grow it's like you know a little bit every day slow slow and steady progress right this is something nora and i were talking about and we wanted to make sure we put in here um i've seen people not put people in the database CRM because they don't they don't have enough information. You really shouldn't worry about that. You should get get them in there, even if it's just a name, because you can always go back and plug that in later. Um, if you only have their email or you only have their phone number, that's a great chance to reach out to them and see if you can just say, I would would it be OK if um, you got my newsletter or, you know, I don't have your email. Um, sometimes people that you meet randomly, you might only um, have one piece of information. But it's important to it's important to know your lead sources. So um, if you can add a note, a lot of databases have a field for the source. And it's, it's important to uh, capture that information so you don't forget who this person is. Any, anything to add on that, Nora? No, um, we'll get into tags and stuff too. Um, but yeah, yeah. Know, know, know where you met them, how you know them, so that you have a point of reference when you reach out to them um, about their contact info or about, you know, something that comes to mind. Yeah. You know? Oh, you met them at the vet when you were dropping off your cat. Okay, great. Has cat. Great. Put that in your database. It seems silly, but then you'll remember like, you know, Susie from vet, it has a cat and it'll help. I promise with communication. And totally. Communication. Totally. And you can always clean up those, those, uh, lead sources later too. Like we, I think we started with dozens of them and it was too many. And then we, we boiled it down this, the Susie with the cat at the vet was, I don't know, you know, you don't need a, you don't need a people you met at the vet tag. Unless that you're be a note. In the, yes. Yeah. Or a tag, <laughs> not a source. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So part three. Um, it's so important to, to communicate to your database and set up automations. And there's so much a, a good CRM will have a lot of automations that you can set up. And we'll we'll talk about a few of those things. Um but um but between you know finding a system or CRM that works for you that you're gonna you're gonna use getting people into it and then get something going out to, out to them regularly these are the three things that I think are they might seem really simple but it's amazing how few real, how many realtors they see who don't really don't really have this set up the way they should and um, so um, so understand here that there's a there's a um, there's a funnel system and maybe you've seen a similar graphic like this before 
Um, but basically everybody goes into your database. They're, they're all in as contacts or leads. Um, and that's just like the set of all the people they get, um, they get marketed to put on drips, communicated with a certain number of them, um, become, uh, become leads, warmer leads. Um, they're interested in real estate. They're engaging, responding somehow. And then you can set appointments with those people and they become customers. Um, but what I just want everyone to understand is that people, people are at different stages in the funnel and your job, um, your job in the sales side of this business is to get people through the funnel and to have a system or systems that identify who puts their hand up, uh, who's interested in real estate. So that's, that's the name of the game. And then a certain number of those people you can set appointments with and will become customers. Uh, so Nora, do you want to talk about how we, I could share my screen too with, um, with uh, follow up boss. Do you want to talk about how we how we tag and organize people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Andy, I'm gonna bring up help. myself and and Sherilyn, so we're not looking at a. His um, tags look kind of crazy if you look on the lower left hand side. It it looks like a lot of tags, right? Um, and honestly, we could probably even do a little tag cleanup. I'll admit that. Um, but basically, Actually, we could. <laughs> <laughs> we could, and we probably will. Um, well, all our skeletons are coming out of the closet. However, more tags yeah. is way better than less tags because the the why are we using tags? Because in command, in follow up boss, and pretty much anywhere, you can sort and filter by these tags. So Sherilyn loves to do pop buys. Okay. She loves to do things for special events and occasions like Veterans Day, for example. So we have a tag for people that are veterans. She wants that list of people. Oh, I don't have to go dig it out of a file folder. I can just go in here. Anyone who has the tag veteran, pull it out. It's perfect. And it's really easy to update as we find out. So like we were saying, imperfect information is okay. When you find out more, you feed it every day, right? Oh, I was just talking to Tom, you know, the other day and I found out Tom was in the Navy. Oh, great. I'm going to add a veteran tag on for Tom. So now next year when Veterans Day comes around, we'll pull that tag and oh, there we go. Tom gets a card and a little thing of popcorn for Veterans Day. So um, yeah. you really want to um, make your tags work for you. So you should have tags, you know, pipeline buyer, pipeline seller. Um, you can have them be sorted um, so many ways. Um, but one thing that you always want to do is like keep updating these, right? So if someone had the pipeline buyer tag, right? But then they signed a contract with you and they closed, you need to have them on the close tag because how else are you going to reach out to all your clients who've closed with you to invite them to your client appreciation party than if you totally. can easily pull that list from your database um, and then you can say, hey, you know, I'm having this client event party. Oh, and who do you know who might be looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? If you are just trying to use your head to remember who's closed with you, you might miss somebody, right? And they they might be a little sad they didn't get invited to the client appreciation party. So your database is backup for your brain, basically. When your brain fails or when you miss somebody or when you're doing a million things like realtors do, your database has your back if you feed it and tag it correctly. Yeah, and so we keep everybody, the like the tags and the, sta and the statuses um, help us keep everybody in the right list. So we have, um, I don't have to go all, all into all of these, but we have, um, we have, you know, quite a number of lists, including specific types of people and including w how they've responded to marketing communications. And so, um, and just all kinds of other things. And we also maintain um, a, a couple of pipeline lists. We have like an ABC list of the people who are very, you know, very close to transacting uh, so that we can reach out to them more frequently. And then we have um, a D pipeline too, that are people who are more like they're further up the funnel. They're like maybe a year plus out and then they can get maybe just a little different type of nurture. But and so see, I want to just point this out, Andy, before you, oh, before yeah. you go away from that, um, if you can go oh, back. Yeah. Um, you see where it has last communication. Look at this. 
this, uh, if you're using your CRM, it's going to track when you're talking to your people, right? So you can filter by when you last talked to somebody, or you can see like, oh, I haven't had a conversation with my close client in about, you know, seven months, I should probably reach out to them, right? So that's one of the really great pluses of having your information here in a database versus an Excel sheet. It's going to auto track it for you if you're using it, right? Yeah. Um, versus you having to go in and manually enter all that stuff. So, some databases well, you at, oh, boss, can even record your call. Um, so yeah. you can record what you talked about if you turn it on. You know, there's a feature for that. Right, right. So look up where it says under ShareLine's name. The reason it says two days ago for ShareLine is because we put ourselves on our own drip campaigns so that we can see them and just get a feel for what that stuff looks like to the customer. But every every uh, contact in here has a last communicated communication field that the CRM keeps track of. And so good ones like this will, like Nora said, will it can spit you out just a list of um, of uh, people that you haven't talked to in in um, whatever period of time. Uh, and, and then I wanted to point out here too, and Nora, feel free to jump in and elaborate on this, but um, we have action plans uh, in here that people go on. Command has what, smart plans? Yep. So like this buyer, nurture, buyer, nurture, buyer, seller, um, there's another field I won't go into it, but we can go in and look at what all these are. But they're basically, they're basically email um, from you. templates from that me, and they come. From... So this is your 36 touch right here, right? right. And a lot of them, free right. systems, command, follow boss, all of those. A lot of them have pre-built in plans that you can copy over for yourself, right? Um, and then, and then there's a list. There's an ongoing list in the middle here of um, of uh the entire communication history with the customer or person jim jim is asking if we do a lot of online leads and incubate them with this system or if this or if an agent is 100 percent by referral if it's still really helpful um we we don't really do a lot of online leads like they're all coming from i mean they come from social media from shareline making connections and stuff but a lot yeah. of the people you know we've had an appointment with um, they, they weren't ready yet to sign. So we put them on a drip campaign or, you know, they filled out our inquiry form and they weren't ready for an appointment. So we put them on the drip plan and it's coming from Sherline, right? So it's Sherline reaching out. Um, and it's funny because sometimes Sherline will be like, I don't remember reaching out to them, but they wrote back to me and like, that's the system working out, working, um, on your behalf. So it helps okay. keep you front of mind when you can't keep them front of mind. Can Jim? I, can I add to oh. that too? We, we have at times done online leads, but it's not uh, we, our use y -Lopo. we use we use for that, um, but we, um, you know, we've, we've um, pu pushed and pulled that a bit, depending on budget and what's happening in the market right now. Um, but when people do visit our website, they can, they, they get, they come into the CRM automatically, and then they get added to a smart plan if they're just like a um an online lead and so one of the things that's cool here too is that if you look at this recent activity in in here i can see everybody i can see every property that um that this person this happens to be share lane but i can see the the properties that she's looked at that she's clicked on yeah. so this is super super useful to um to have a conversation with a client and just keep just keep track of it Jim, were you? Hi, this is Shervline. It's nice to see your face finally, Jim. Thank you. You as well. I uh, appreciate it. I miss you guys. I, I miss you too. I have a oh, question. Hi, Jim. I, I have hey, a Andy. question. Hey, hey Shervline, a... why are yes. you looking for homes? Are you planning on moving out on Andy? Oh, <laughs> no, uh, no he, he will be the one kicked out first. No, a quick question. When you were talking about online leads, were you referring to Zillow leads, Vilopo leads, the Facebook paid leads uh, thing? Was that what you were referring to? Yeah, good question. You know, um, I've been meeting with a lot of more, not more agents lately, and a lot of them, their businesses are built on like Red uh, Zillow, you know, um, buying Zillow leads or having these um, what third parties that they pay money to, and then they mm -hmm. just get a bunch of leads and they feed them into a system, mm -hmm. which are very yep. cold. 
that's one degree. The second one sounds like, Caroline, what you're saying is maybe there are people you meet on Facebook or social media. That there's, might no, be there's no maybe. 90% of our business was built with social media and me. And that's what, so when I do my social media class, I will uh, tell you all about that. But we didn't have the money. I mean, you know our story. When we first started out, we we were close to losing our home because of my uh, 200K plus medical bills, et cetera. So I just went on social media and spoke about Indian cooking, love, uh, gardening, and you know, telling people how to wear a sari. I didn't think anyone would care. People were watching me. And then people, mm. complete strangers would write to me, interact with me. And I would, I would just humbly say, hey, you know, can I keep in touch with you? I wouldn't even discuss real estate. I, I would just say, can I just stay in touch with you? May I have your, may I have your uh, phone and email address? And people would give it to me. And so, and and one day, uh, and then as my reputation on social media grew, I would just say, would you feel comfortable uh, if if people had um, was celebrating an anniversary or a birthday? Or there was a or, or there was a death in the family. I would just say, you know, I uh, in in India, uh, it's cultural. In my culture, it's a cultural thing for us to send over a card. So I would just say, if you, uh, I I would just write them a personal note saying, "Happy anniversary! I'm so happy for you. May I just send you uh, uh, an anniversary card?" And uh, People would, be, uh, people would be like, oh my gosh, I haven't received a card in ages. Please send it to me. It never occurred to me that what I was doing, uh, my, my past habits, the way I was raised would help yeah. me uh, in my current. And I came from genuine, uh, I was being, I, wa I was and am an authentic person. I, and I genuinely came from curiosity. But you know, all I, these I want to pull things, it back. Oh, sorry. Go, go. I want to pull it back to the database stuff because I, I I promised everyone we'd keep this to a half hour crash course. Um, if anyone needs to pop off, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And feel free to reach out to us. I know this was just a teaser, maybe of a little bit of information. So if there's something you want to know more about, don't hesitate to reach out to me or Nora and we will, um, you know, we'll be glad to kind of like show you how we do things if you if you need more help. Um, but again, the main things I wanted to just just hit on are, you know, make sure make sure you've got a system of some kind. Make sure you keep people going in there and get everybody you know into that thing, and then keep some marketing going out to them. One thing I, I wanted to really quickly mention too is that we our newsletter goes to everybody. So at, at the minimum, if you get everybody in there and design some kind of a monthly communication, you're you're way ahead of everybody else just by doing that and then you can always build it up from there when, when you have and a system when you have a system in place things like you can keep in mind you are not just entering you have the opportunity to add uh, stuff like anniversaries birthdays things like that uh the system helps you deep dive even further but the first basic thing is the a level level thing is at least get their get, get their email address in or their phone number, get one or the other. Just don't be embarrassed to ask. People are just so nice because it's, what I, what our, I love about it's our mindset that we don't, that people may, may not want to talk to us. What what I love about you, what you were saying about when we were getting started, Sherline, is that, um, is that, uh, you know, we, 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 he had a lot of contact with people, but we didn't necessarily get them into any kind of a system. And we probably lost a lot of business just because we didn't capture people in something and we didn't get them marketed to it because we were just trying to do everything at once. And so if that bit can help anybody, um, you know, that would have helped us a lot earlier on if we if we could have gotten a handle on some of this earlier. And, and we did, but, you know, it's it's um uh let, let when you're getting you, started it's all it's all it's all new <laughs> let me give well, there's you always tags you want to add to like you know yes. this year Sherilyn was like we need to make a tag for lunar new year so we know who to wish a happy lunar new year to every year for our clients that celebrate yeah. so we literally just added that tag and we went through our lists and we were like who needs this tag and we added it this week <laughs> so 
Your, yeah. <laughs> your job as, let me show you something because it's funny that this should happen just on the day I decide to clean my office, which is a bloody <laughs> mess. This was my database. Literally, yeah. if you can see this, I, uh, I literally write down everyone's names. This, this was in the past. I still, guess what? I still do that. But at the same time, I also have my assistant Marjorie put everything down online. And why do we do this two-way thing? Because I think I, I know in I know as as we pe we people from India are known to be very technology savvy. Well, I well, guess what? I, I'm the one Luddite in, in my country who's terrified of technology. So we have this two-way system just for Shareline, where Shareline writes down things. And then Marjorie, my assistant, is entering everything into follow up boss so that all the other admins are, uh, are ha handling the drip campaign and all that kind of stuff. My point to telling you this, figure out a system that works for you. My father, who was an accountant, used to use an accounting ledger. Well, guess what? I recently met another realtor who has um, uh, who is neurodiverse and prefers doing it that way. So what is one of those accounting ledgers? It's, it's, no, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just the book version of an Excel spreadsheet. My point is you do you, but please, for the love of God, have a system in place, otherwise you're losing business. And, and if, you, if you are scared of technology, the tech person at your office, whether it's KW, EXP, uh, uh, Colwell Banker, I don't care. Someone at your brokerage will do it, but and 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 one the one thing that should motivate you to to do this is to figure out before you start all this, figure out how much money you need to make or what are your big bills that you need to pay. Because man, uh, that two hundred and eight thousand dollars that we owed the hospitals and and having Wells Fargo's uh, appraisers bang on our doors telling us that we would be they would be foreclosing on us. That got my ass in gear right away, <laughs> seriously. And I literally, frantically started on paper and um, and mean. But meanwhile, and uh, Andy, because he loved technology, was doing it on KW Lakes's very first um, uh, tech. We didn't have command then; we had something else. But I don't know what. But he kept everyone organized, and uh, well, that's why. I Oh, sorry, please. And because I tend to be forgetful, I put detailed notes, met so-and-so person mm -hmm. at Petco. We discussed the, uh, we discussed yeah. grooming techniques on a Sharpie. It, it gives me, vision. it brings back, uh, that, will, that will help you so much better because when you reach out to that person, all you've got to do is say, hey, how's your puppy doing? Do you see what I'm saying? That's what... And that's why I put this slide in there too, because it's less about what the actual number is than it is if you have something in mind about what you need to make, this will motivate you to keep people added in there. Ultimately, um, uh, one, one, one thing that also worked for me better was I love watching a lot of Bollywood movies. And again, everyone, you do you. But Bollywood movies help me bring my anxiety and stress levels down. During that time, that's when I'm adding people in. So some people actually have on their calendar from nine to 10, I'm going to just do blah, blah, blah. For me, I literally, for me, my one habit is during Bollywood movies, I'm going to just add, try to get people's uh, phone number, home address, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, the, the point of this class is, is, it's okay to not have a system in the in, in the beginning, but the faster you learn to have a system, you'll see your move, your business slowly going bigger and bigger, going going forward step by step by step. That's how we closed twenty nine deals in our first year, and we paid off. So we paid off the two hundred and eight. Oh, and one second, we we paid off the yeah, two hundred and eight thousand okay. dollars in seventeen months. We were still broke. Well, I promised we would keep this to another 15 minutes or so so um uh does anyone have any any questions or anything before we sign off or any comments or q a 
And uh, like I said, uh, you know, just just keep in touch, follow us on social media. And um, we're here if you have any questions. We're always happy to answer on yeah. how we set up our business. One last thing, if if you meet other realtors laughing at you or stuff like that, or, or I had people who would laugh at me like this, at this, and I would feel hurt. I have in hindsight learned that the faster you set up your boundaries to protect your mental health, you do you, but please have a system in place and don't, uh, and, and don't let other people's nonsense get to you. <laughs> <laughs> Go make Good a advice. Lot of money. Thank you, Sherlyn. Go make a lot of money. I'm I'm very proud of all of y'all, and thank you for taking the time to come today. Yes, thank you. We'll um, yeah. get that um, mind jogger exercise out to you guys too, um, with the link to the survey. If you didn't catch it in the chat, um, anything else to add, Andy? Or we're we wrapping up. No, we'll we'll follow up with everybody whose email we have too. So thanks, Jim. Good to see you. Thank you all. Likewise, you guys. It's awesome. We'll be in touch. Jim, yeah. call me. I miss you. I left you a call. 